Hello friends, this is Sayyid Muhammad Wakas. The topic which I'm going to discuss today is related to hot water heater capacity calculation and selection. So the first sheet here is related to the individual hot water heater capacity calculation selection. And the second spreadsheet here is related to the central hot water heater capacity calculation and selection. You can see here. So individual hot water heater supplying hot water to single or multiple spaces without any recirculation system but here we have a central hot water heater which is supplying hot water to multiple spaces within the building and have large capacity and we have a hot water recirculation system as well so therefore in this uh, central hot water heating system we will calculate the central hot water heater capacity storage tank capacity as well as we will calculate the circulation pump flow as well as head so the source of heat in the central hot water heating system could be solar boiler or heat pumps so primary source of heat are these three which i mentioned here of course there will be a secondary source of uh, heat would be attached to the storage tank and that is electric power heater that is attached to the hot water storage tank in case primary power is failed there will be a secondary uh, source of power will be there for hot water system and that will be electric uh, backup power heater so let's get started with the first spreadsheet that is in view hot water heater capacity calculation and selection so as you can see here that the calculation will be according to the type of building and fixture unit method so it is very important to select the type of the building here because uh, this table here the demand mentioned here as well as demand factor and storage capacity factor all of these are depending on type of the building which you select from here there are several type of the building you can see here apartment club gym hotel hospital industrial office building private residential and many more in here so it depends on what type of building you will select if i select the gym the demand will be changed demand factor will be changed you can see here demand factor storage capacity everything will be changed like if i select industrial it will be changed as well and if i select the private residential it will be changed as well so let's say i'm going to select uh, individual hot water heater for an apartment here apartment in the building so first uh, uh, and this table is extracted from ashtray application handbook chapter 45 table 9 this table so this table means the demand all of the demand mentioned here the demand factor and storage capacity factors so it depends on type of the building which you select here so first step you have to go to the drawing and you have to count the number of fixture needed hot water in your space so you have to go and count the number of fixtures in hot water. Let's say the fixture type and number of fixtures here. So let's say the lever, uh, laboratory which are private in the apartment. So the private laboratory we have to and you have to check this from the drawing. So you have to check the bathtub. If it, let's say it's one dishwasher, one food basin, one kitchen sink, one laundry, one and shower two. So all you need to do is you have to put the values here in the quantity. And it will uh, calculate the total gallons per hour gph so private laboratory you can see here we have two and then we have a uh, bathtub one then we have dishwasher one food basin one and then kitchen sink uh, we have uh, one laundry we have one and uh, shower we have two so once I put all the values in here, it will calculate the gallons per hour for each fixture. So total is calculated in here, which is the sum of all the fixtures here. So total GPH is calculated 132 gallons per hour. So now we have to apply the demand factor in here. As I told you, this demand factor is depend on type of the building which you have selected in here. So for apartment, it's 0.3. So you just need to multiply this uh, demand with 0.3 demand factor and you will get probable maximum demand is 39.6 so heater recoil capacity is same as probable maximum demand which is calculated in here that is 39.6 now the storage capacity factor 
this again depends on type of the building which you have selected here storage capacity factor so storage tank capacity in the gallons we need to calculate in here we simply multiply this probable maximum demand with this uh, storage capacity factor here you can see that and we will calculate the storage tank capacity in gallons so needed storage tank capacity in gallons is 27.72 gallons so if you need in liter you simply need to apply the conversion factor and you will get the storage tank capacity in liters so now we know the storage hot water heater storage tank capacity in liters so we can select the hot water heater from the suppliers catalog so you just have to go to the approved suppliers catalog and then you will let's say i have uh, one here that is zenith water heater catalog let's say this is the approved catalog which approved supplier catalog which i have in here so i will select from this one so as you can see here these are the horizontal wall ceiling mount hot water heater and these are the capacities you can see here so we have 100 we have 100 120 so these are available in the standard capacities and the one which we calculated here is 105 105 so 120 is there so we are going to select 120 liters capacity in here and the standard power if you see is 2 kilowatt so we'll select 120 liter capacity with 2 kilowatt power so we have to write in here 120 which we select and power is 2 kilowatt so as i write in here so water heater selection is done here so selected hot hot uh, heater storage capacity in liters is 120 and power is 2 kilowatt so this is how you can do for the individual hot water heater system so let's go to the central hot water heater calculation here so same calculation will be made according to the type of the building and fixture unit methods here you have three things first is the type of the building second is the type of the pipe will be used and the type of the uh, means insulation it's insulated or not insulated you have to write here and the type of the pipe so again it depends on type of the building these table values this demand this demand factors and uh, this capacity factor depends on type of the building which you select from here so there are a lot of available here if you select the hotel this demand will be changed as well as demand factor and storage capacity factor will be changed so same for school if you select the school or hospital it will be changed as well so let's say i'm going to select for office building and uh, pipe i'm going to use the hot water pipes is insulated or not insulated this is very important to select it here because this table which is extracted from aspe code so here are the values heat loss per foot of the pipe it depends if you have pipes insulated or uninsulated insulated if you have like fiberglass insulation half inch fiberglass insulation you can select here the insulated as i select insulated the values will be changed depends on the depend on the if i have selected the insulated or non-insulated pipe so let's say i am selected the non-insulated pipe i don't apply any insulation if you have insulation you can select insulated pipe and these stable values will be changed accordingly so again you have a type of pipe used so there are different uh, pipes available here schedule 40 steel brass and uh, type k copper so again these values q loss per foot of the pipe depends on the material which you select from the top so it is important to select the correct material from here so let's say I'm going to select for type K copper here, office building, no insulated pipe. So if you have insulated pipe, you don't have to worry about the, if I have insulated pipe here, I don't have to worry about the type of the pipe which I'm going to use here. So let's move to the next step. Again, same thing. First of all, you have to write the number of fixture. You have to count the fixture from the drawing. And then you have to write the quantities in here it will calculate the 
demand in gallons per hour. So let's say I have laboratories in the office building that are 15. Let's make this non insulated. And the laboratories we have 15 in the office building, and we have a kitchen sink 10, we have pantries 10, and service sinks 10. So let's write the quantities here in the table. Again, the source is same ASHRAE application handbook for this table, chapter 45, table 9. So let's me write the laboratories for public laboratories, 15 laboratories we have. Then we have a kitchen sink, we have 10. Pantry sink, we have 10. And service sink, we have 10. So once I write all the quantities in here based on my drawing, so I will calculate the gallons per hour here, which is the sum of all the fixtures. So 590 here. So in order to get the probable maximum demand, I need to multiply this demand factor with this uh, gallons per hour demand. So I will multiply 590 with 0.3. I will get the probable maximum demand is 177. So heat coil capacity is same as the probable maximum demand. That is 177. Now the storage capacity factor is 2 for this office building. So storage capacity factor is 2. So storage tank capacity in gallons will be. You simply need to multiply this probable maximum demand with this storage capacity factor. You will get 354 gallons storage capacity for this office building. If you need to convert this into liters, simply apply the conversion factor. You will get the capacity in liters. So again, you have to go to the approved supply catalogs and select this storage tank hot water heater storage tank so next step is i have to calculate the pump flow and the head for recirculation system hot water recirculation system so as i told you this table is extracted from asp core table 17-1 it is important to uh, compute the values to proceed for pump head and uh, capacity calculation for recirculation system so I have write all the pipes uh, from the drawings in here, whatever I've used uh, in the project for hot water system. So I have write in here. So piping length I have write in here from the drawing as well. Now this Q loss, that the heat loss per foot of the pipe, it depends on this pipe uh, material is insulated or not, or type of the pipe which you have selected in here. So now we have to calculate the heat loss in BTUs per hour. Since this value is in meters, we need to convert this into foot. So that's why we have multiplied this with 3.28 in here in order to convert from meter to feet. And we just need to multiply this 80 into 3.28 into 15. We'll get the total loss in BTUs per hour. So same way you have to do for all the piping you have used in your project. So and you have to calculate the heat loss in BTUs per hour for each piping length. So once you calculate for all the pipings uh, in your project, you have to write uh, total loss in BTUs per hour in here for hot water network, which is the sum from top to the bottom. See that is so we got total 67,174 BTUs per hour heat loss. So for each 10,000 BTUs per hour need 1 GPM. So we need to add 1 GPM for each 10,000 BTUs per hour. So we calculate here is 67,174 BTUs per hour. So required GPM for heat loss makeup pump will be total heat loss in the system that is this value 67,174 divided by 10,000. So required GPM for the heat loss makeup pump will be 6.7 GPM. So this is the capacity. So now we have to calculate the pump head as well. For in, in order to calculate the pump head, we have to check the farthest pipe length for supply as well as return to get the pump head. And since we have a loss in the straight pipe length as well as the fitting, so we have to compute the loss for the straight pipe length as well as fittings to get the pump head. So in order to get the pump head, you need to uh, 1.5 into uniform friction head loss, uniform friction loss into 
total piping length why i multiply this with 1.5 uh, let me tell you first uniform uh, friction loss first and then I will tell you 1.5 why I multiply with 1.5 it is recommended to use 4 foot per 100 foot to 6 foot per 100 foot uniform friction head loss it is recommended so if you have seen my previous videos I have used the 4 foot per 100 foot uh, uniform friction head loss so same I have used in here 4 foot per 100 foot uh, of the uniform friction loss and why I multiply this 1.5 to compute the losses for the straight pipe length and fittings so for fit, if you don't know the friction loss for the fittings it is a thumb rule to add 50% of the straight piping length of friction losses for the fittings so 50% and 1 it will be 1.5 total so that's why I multiply with 1.5 so 1.5 into 4 by 100 into total pipe length so total pipe length as i told you it is the furthest pipe length supply and return from the source of supply to the furthest outlet so from the drawing you have to check the uh, furthest pipe length and you have to write in here i have write 70 and convert this into feet here as well so pump head is equal to calculated in here by adding or uh, putting all the values in here 1.5 into 4 divided by 100 into pipe length is 229.61. So after putting all the values, you get the pump head 13.8 feet head. If you want to convert this into psi, just uh, multiply with 0.433, you will get the pump head in psi. That is 5.97 psi. So now we can. Uh, well, now we know the storage tank capacity for central hot water heater system is 354 gallons. Storage tank is needed and uh, yes, hot water circulation pump selection is also done the flow which we calculate here is 6.7 gpm and the head which we have calculated here is 5.97 psi so this is how you can do the hot water uh, heater capacity calculation storage tank capacity calculation and selection so I hope you guys learned something from this video. For more videos, keep watching my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.